So I've been Holland University. I've been there for two years. I was an English teacher for 24 years before that. Um, and what I reflect with people like that is actually, in the last two and a half years, I've been in 137 different schools. So I feel a bit more empowered to talk about how schools are. Um, and I've made a composite um, advert to try and attract teachers to the schools that I see. Here it is. No Brainer Academy. Brainium non necessitum. That's the school motto. Are you right first time every time? Then we're looking for you. Teachers needed at No Brainer Academy. Are you able to dispense our pre-planned lessons that take the love out of learning? Here at No Brainer, we understand students can do fun stuff at home. No need for fun at school. Can you read facts off a colourful PowerPoint and get kids to write them down and learn them? Can you put a stop to anything productive that might be going on every 20 minutes to make sure that progress is being made? We know all the Ofsted words like rigour and accountability and outstanding with a capital O and aspire, so you can be assured that we too have learnt to, uh, to do what we're told in an unthinking way. We've got brand new shiny buildings like a shopping centre, great. A brilliant badge and a vacuous motto that all add up to an appearance of quality. All the kids wear the same uniform with piping round the edges of the blazer so they look like a big brass band. We also have a trophy head teacher who you only see in photos and never in real life. <laughs> Do you like data? We love data. We've got loads of it. Data that will tell you all you need to know about your students, meaning that you won't need to get to know them. No fuss, no mess. However, well, however well even, terrible drama, this needs to go back, don't buy this. <laughs> however well your results go, this data will always find ways to suggest your incompetence. If you do have a futile interest in teaching and learning, so old school, then there is a lunchtime club for you where you can meet with the other lefties we haven't driven out yet. <laughs> don't worry though, senior management pay no attention to these discussions whatsoever. There are a few superfluous lessons still on the timetable, but we take every opportunity to withdraw everyone from these lessons for extra literacy and numeracy intervention, mainly with unqualified staff. We've plenty of middle leaders who've been made to follow you around with a clipboard, noting down your inadequacies while they learn to walk. <laughs> we won't overburden you with a good salary, so there will be plenty of time in your ridiculously long holidays to do schoolwork instead of having a holiday. If this sounds like you, come and join us. No Brainer Academy, creating a generation of unthinking teachers that we can constantly humiliate for their lack of skill and professionalism. No Brainer, proud member of the Numb Nuts Academy chain. Um, thank you very much. Um, that's what I see. And I see an education that offers a direct route for every child to the right answer. How many people are up there in this painting? Four, says everybody in an unthinking way. Then actually, if we change the question a little bit, how many might there be? I asked this in a private school in Derby on Thursday to year one and two kids, and I had answers from one to nine to none, and the creativity around what they could suggest and think through was absolutely stunning. The answer, of course, is three. Would you like to know why there were three? It's because, you see, your problem is, you, you're still in that education mode, right answers, don't think about it, just see what you see. You're constricted by the idea that a painting or a photo shows one moment in time. This painting shows two moments in time. The moment when this guy is thinking about going to chat that lady up, and then the moment when he's doing it. So the two chaps there are the same guy. I made that up, but <laughs> it sounded good when it went by, did it? There's a chap still wondering about that. Um, what will children need to know in 15 years' time? I heard Guy Claxton say that um, in a lecture I went to see uh, that he led. And I thought, I've been a teacher for years, it's going to be great. I know that. And then he asked that question. That was the first question. I was completely flummoxed. It never crossed my mind that all the stuff that I dished out was important and necessary. But I didn't know the answer to that question, I'm afraid. Um, neither does he. And do you know what Guy Claxton said? 
we don't know. And I thought, brilliant, I got that one right. That's yeah. right. <laughs> it's happy days for me. And then he said, so what are we going to teach them? Oh, no, back out the game again. And the answer, of course, is to learn, to have the capacity, to have some resilience and resourcefulness, to be able to persist in all those skills that don't appear in any curriculum. We're hugely influential. It doesn't matter about the government. I'd like to think that teachers, and, and I've always had to do this since 1991 when I started teaching, you shut the door because a lot of the stuff outside the door is pretty crap. Inside, you've got to make it as good as possible for your students. So this is what we give them. Little kids leaving primary school, off to high school. 59 technical terms of grammar. That's what we need. You've got, quite a few of you have just done what audiences do when they see this. You've lost an inch in height. <laughs> Either through boredom or through fear. Martin, don't ask me <laughs> about novelisation. Okay, well. So we offer them studying. Um, but sometimes, some kids, really brilliant kids, they can't do studying because they haven't been standardised. If you're going to squeeze everybody through the same funnel, some really great people aren't going to be able to get through the funnel. They don't want to do it, and then they get into trouble. And teachers have been forced into being right all the time. I'm a pirate, so you make a nice t-shirt. Um, you've got to be right first time, all the time, every time. And we've got a dilemma because jumping through hoops is what we do. Get through this hoop. As a, as a classroom teacher, you've got a choice. Let's say you're an English teacher. Um, I, can, I can make good communicators, linguists, lovers of literature, or I can get them to jump through these nine hoops and pass their test. What does everybody else want me to do? And we've got what I call the educational food chain of anxiety. If you're a classroom teacher, this is news here. Look at the weight of pressure, of anxiety, of competing schools, burdened by government, having to be better than their neighbours. I, I worked in the school where the head um, in September when we met and we were discussing the, the uh, exam results said, it's brilliant, we've beaten such and such a school. Who was well at it? Their kids didn't do very well. Our kids did really well. <coughs> Come on, results! <laughs> and you know what? The data monkeys aren't happy, the kids are letting us down. The outstanding chasers aren't happy, they've learned to do what they're told. Why can't the kids do that as well? It's outrageous. Meanwhile, the kids have learnt the shape of the spoon. Uh, that's not Elvis. That, well, that's Elvis, but that's Michael Go. <laughs> Elvis would never be quite as dull as that. Only when facts and concepts are committed to blah, 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 shut up. <laughs> the generation that didn't educate its children but got away with it, is that going to be us? Are we going to be the education, that, 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 that people who just fill kids' heads with facts? What facts do you remember from your own schooling? I remember Brasilia is the capital of Brazil. Well, it was when I was at school, maybe it's not now. But <laughs> I, other than that, I'm a, I'm a bit short of facts. So what's the point of school? I don't know. And maybe the digital superhighway is going to save them because learning's fascinating on there. Better than coming to school, because school is becoming increasingly abstract. Sir, can I finish my poem? Don't be so silly, the bell's gone. You're going to play hockey now. But I'm just, next Thursday, you'll pick up on your creative idea. Um, we've got to, the, the, the point seems to be able to remember things. And, and, and we, we, we make the exams really important, which, which I think actually makes, I don't know about you, I, I revise for an exam and then it's erased onto the next one. And, and I don't actually retain any of this stuff. He never put the, retained any of that stuff. That's me. Um, I'm a real live enemy of promise. I heard them being mentioned earlier. I'm one of them. All it amounts to was signing a petition saying it's live stuff. I become dangerous and great. Look at me. That's what I do. I'm actively trying to prevent millions of our poorest children getting the education they need. I've made quite a poor start on that, but I'm working on it. Um, <laughs> here I go. Check this out. Putting the nut in. <laughs> <laughs> what word do you see? Evil. Do you know what? We ask kids, they all see good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God bless you. 
In, in that uh, school I was in on Thursday, all went, good! And I thought, oh, good for the kids, and you all went, evil. <laughs> That's what I see. Finishing sentence stems for teachers, remembering things for another day. Why is the lesson never important for today? Look, I know you don't like it, I don't like it, we've just got to do it. <laughs> Hang on, nobody likes it. <laughs> nobody wants to do it. Let's not do it. It's shit. <laughs> <laughs> Being right, first time, every time. High stakes, low impact testing, I'm afraid, is what I see. Children need to think. They need to be thinking about things that don't have solutions, not answers we already know. What's two and two? It's four. Brilliant. What should we do with that information? Nothing. Let's park it there. Okay. This is better. The kids are these people. Runaway train. Five people down here. If we push the big guy off, he gets killed. We save five. Are you going to kill one person to save five? I don't know. Let's get kids thinking about questions like that. He knows it. He lives in Canada. He works in lots of schools looking at assessment. Canada's brilliant. There's no national curriculum. The teacher teaches the kids to a maximum of 20 in a class, and the teacher sets the exams, and he might set 20 different exams if there are 20 different needs. The teacher marks the ex uh, exam and awards the grade. You don't recognise that anymore. It's called trust. It's, don't worry about it. You're unlikely to need it. Um, are we just going to make our curriculum simple or relevant? That seems to be the choice that, that, that I have. I can make it simple, we'll just do the test, we'll pass the test, erase, and blank screen again. Because now, with all the digital ways to learn and to think, see, schools are becoming less of a centre, I think, of a child's education. When I went to school in 1970, 80, um, it was where I found out about life. That's where all the information was. Now, kids find out about it on their phone and on their laptops, and that gets handed in when you go to school. In the box, please. I don't know. Kids are plugged in all day long with every device. As soon as they get home, they start learning again. And who do you think they're going to listen to? They're going to listen to me. My kids don't listen to me. If I, if I need to know, so I have to go and ask them. And, and you know, what are we doing with this? Uh, uh, right, all the children need to know all the kings and queens in order. If you say that to a kid, they go, hang on, sir, I'll, I'll look that up for you. What's all that for? It's crazy. And we've got a bad attitude to the internet, I think. Um, I think that's, <laughs> that kind of sums up, that used to be my attitude, I think. Um, and we don't trust it. <laughs> but is it evolution, I wonder? Maybe it is. And actually, I detect, and maybe Mark detects, a growing tension between teacher and student preferences. If you look down here, digital natives, these, these children have grown up with this stuff. They want to receive information quickly. They want to do things now. They want to, they want to, hyper, they want to move between hyperlinks. They, want to, um, they like the randomness of collecting. They want to learn just in time. I don't want any of that. I'm panicking just thinking about it. I want to write the learning objectives first. <laughs> Can we just do that? Can we just spend five minutes doing that? And if we do that every lesson, that's like a whole afternoon of writing down learning objectives. Pretty good, eh? Um, why do kids, kids listen to you? 85% of school children never use paper or pen other than when they're in school or writing their homework. It's all part of the abstract, lovely world of school. And we just keep testing for it retention of information. Do, 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 do businesses want this? I don't think they do. Do we expect the adult world is going to be paper-based? I don't know. We're dishing out old knowledge. What kids need, I think, is new knowledge. They read and write all day long. All those things. Well, let's do a quick challenge. A few students who are here and there that belong to me don't find up. Right, we're going to do a quick challenge and it's too hard. So you can't do it. So we, we've got to choose. Shall we do it with a partner? Or what would be best, a partner or by yourself? Partner, don't be so silly. Exams are done in isolation, in a little bubble by yourself. So that's silly. Um, what attitude or frame of mind should we adopt? It's too hard. So I guess we give up, yeah? No. We don't give up. 
Oh, we've got this crash barrier there. Right? <laughs> right, you've got one minute to translate that. Oh, hang on, we do have some languages folk in the room. That's not good news. Hello. Can I get closer to it? Can you get close? Can you get close? What is it? Oh, wait, no, that's just me. Oh, fuck, I need to know what language to start with. Anyone know? Italian? Bring it up, Bell's gone. Um, oh dear, it's too hard. We've got it. Go on then. Cheese, pizza, jar, kebab, some other food. That's it. Do you know, the, do you know those moments when, when the kid is completely wrong? <laughs> and they couldn't be more wrong. Yeah, people don't care what we And the bottle of the you missed that one. Like That's a really one. good go at answering that question. <laughs> and all that stuff. <laughs> or when really you just want to go wrong. Boom. <laughs> well, this time, let's do it again. I'll scaffold it for you a bit. I'll give you the translation. This time, can you tell me about, a couple of minutes, can you tell me about the nature of the Italian language? Just have a chat with people around you. What, what can you know? Stop talking about cheese. <laughs> Four cheeses. Time's up. Bell's gone. We're off to find out about photosynthesis now. Um, what? Just one or two answers. I know there'll be plenty, but one or two. What, what, what do you observe about Italian as a language? Yes, sir. So there's a there's an interest in grammar. So grammar might be but different. That might be something we need to investigate whilst we learn Italian. Yes, sir. Not many cognates. Don't come round here with your big words. <laughs> to upset people. Anything? Yes, Miss? There's a lot of O's at the end of each uh, Yeah, there's actually there's quite a lot of vowels, aren't there? That, maybe there's a case system or something going on. We'll have to investigate there's that. Don't too know. many words. Too many words. Is there a masculine and feminine variation? Could be a case system. Now, you and I have been learning Italian for four minutes. I've taught you nothing but we're already well on the way to exploring new information and trying to figure out how we're going to do things. You are finding out new knowledge. You're taking control of that. You've either got to be involved or not. And you know that's much easier to spot than kids in a classroom who've all been given a sheet and filling things in and talking about X factor at the same time. You're either doing that or you're not. You're either involved and engaged or you're not. And that's much easier to spot, I think. Let's have fun with science. That's in, I'm going to name and shame them. Clacton County High School in Clacton on Sea. There are hospitality provisions, <laughs> but they don't appear to be for anyone. <laughs> Ask an associate for a demonstration. <laughs> Kids will find these things for you. I've got people who are 35 still coming up to me going, Sir, I've got one of those photos for you. <laughs> What happened when you learned to walk? You fell over a lot. You fell over a lot, you made mistakes. Why did you get back up? Because you wanted to do it. You want to join in. But everyone else is buzzing around, walking, having a great time. You want to join in. You want to be part of what's going on. And your parents didn't really teach you. They just stood a little further back and encouraged you. Maybe there's some lesson for us there. Where are the uncurious children? Where are the kids who don't want to know stuff? They might not want to know what you're trying to tell them, but they want to know stuff. Can we tap into that? Can we be relevant rather than simple? Maybe we can. Let's go outside and let's look at the street art that is great. Let's create opportunities for imagination, curiosity, passion. That's the inside of a guitar, but it would make a brilliant location for a story, I think. Let's play with formats. Let's play with things. Maybe not that. That's actually quite threatening to small children. <laughs> Let's see if they can see things where, where things really aren't. Let's make mistakes. Mistakes are great. I like mistakes. 
And we are actually pretty good at learning things. That kid learned that sentence all by nice hat, kid. That kid learnt that sentence all by himself. He'll work out that me's not the right pronoun there. He's on the uh, second stage of making negatives. He's put the no in the right place. He understands there is a pattern of making the past tense with ed, and he can say park, which is really hard when you've got undeveloped lip muscles like him. He's learning all that stuff by himself, and he put the words in the right order to make sense. Nobody taught him any of that stuff. He's got some skills to that, and we've all got them. Look at you. You want to do something with that, don't you? You can't bear it. But if you had a bit of context, you might be able to do it. It's, whoa, what's going on there? Let's find out. Is that possible? I don't know. Motivated kids, kids who are buzzing, always outperform at every level of acumen, those who don't give a damn. We love learning. I've collected this sign for you from uh, Alastair Woodland School in Derby. And this is a sixth form boys toilet. So look what's going on here. <laughs> Somebody has put a nice sort of spermy apostrophe there. They've got all kinds of things on their mind as they go there. Somebody's crossed it out and whacked it in somewhere else. Doesn't matter what, who's right. We're all thinking about it. We're buzzing for language. <laughs> I'm going to say anything about that. Oh, oh, kids are great at writing. Look at this one. The little boat drifted gently across the pond. Exactly the way a bowling ball would. <laughs> Romance. Her hair glistened in the rain. Like nose hair. <laughs> That's really good. I, I, I can. <laughs> Her eyes were like two bands in Hollywood. <laughs> Here's the best thing ever, even better than E.M. Forster, who we just saw before. John and Mary never met. They were like two, and it's going to be hummingbirds. How great is that? But unfortunately for the plot, <laughs> they've not. This story's got to go out a long way before it comes back. I think. Never mind. We want to know stuff. What happened to her? I've got good news. She lived to a ripe old age, and there's some lovely photos of her with her family round and about. What's going on? What's the grammar now? What's happening? What's happening there? Do photos tell lies? What's going on? That's what we need in classrooms. We need aesthetic moments. We need moments that are for now, that children's lives are rich right now. Not in six months' time for a test so they can have a life at some other moment. If we engage and get them buzzing about what they're learning, they'll want to do the tests, I promise you. Oh. Aesthetic moments reach long-term memory. Your long-term memory even remembers that you enjoyed it when you learnt it. I can tell you the starting lineup, Middlesbrough Football Club, 74 to 75, including both subs, because I've enjoyed it, it's become part of me, it's part of my learning. I don't know why the Queen is running human resources, that, that might be why she's so rich, she's got two jobs. Um, <coughs> yeah, numpty. Kids be good. I might have to take that out of my slideshow, I think that might be bullying. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it looked like fun, but I think they've hung that kid up there. <laughs> oh, there's somebody else who doesn't know. The universe isn't punishing yet. It's about getting stuck in, and joining in the vibrational attitude. Are we going to be part of the world or are we not? Are we going to be relevant in school? Which way is that train going? Is it coming towards you or is it going away? If you look at it at that end, and then look at it at that end, you might... Of a nasty turn. And which train station is it? Which it's a tube. Which tube stop? Excellent. Not many people can see that. That's okay. Reflected in the train there, Charing Cross. Well done. Well about third person all year we've got that. Really? You you could have you couldn't quite could say. Yeah, could Before I left my last school, I made the head teacher put that in everybody's teacher planner. I think that's brilliant. It's uh, the work of uh, Coster and Callick. It's referenced by Guy Claxton. When I'm planning my lessons for people, that's what I bear in mind, because that is, I think, a lovely model of what we might get out of a school. In the middle, presence of mind. What do kids need to know in 15 years' time? I haven't got a clue, and I won't be there to help them. But what I can do is develop their presence of mind, their capacities. 
And then when I examine my own teaching, have I got a mix of that inner circle? Can I get them to investigate? Can I get them to experiment? Where is my, my standard lesson? Which of those things is in? How can I move out of that standard lesson? And then I can develop the, the four R's of there. Look, resilience, resourcefulness, reflectiveness. But nobody could ever say reciprocity or knew what it meant. So it's now sociability. Um, so that's, that's where the, the missing fourth R went. I think I'm, and, and, and I don't know if you agree, watching lessons in schools, you see a lot of reasoning, analysing and explaining. A lot of, this means this, this means that. Know it, write it down. Hmm. Hmm. Well, oh, let's have a look at a couple of spank questions, see if you can do it. This is for 10 year olds, by the way, so don't be patting yourself on the back if you get it wrong. <laughs> Tick the two sentences where the subject and verb agree. There's always with these questions, the government help you because the sort of decent things that you should be doing are always the right answers. So everyone is going to the library is a right answer. <laughs> Children under 16 are not allowed to see this film. But eating fatty foods, hanging about near the station and being slovenly in chairs, no good. <laughs> Here's my favourite question. Complete the sentence below with an adverb that makes sense as opposed to an adverb that makes no sense. <laughs> Can you think of any adverb that wouldn't work? If I say, um, dutifully, um, my context is um, there's going to be a fair, uh, the, the, there's going to be a fair on the village green the next morning and it needs to be nice. Chapter 47, the sun shone dutifully in the sky. Point to me. Um, Loads of kids wrote bright, which is more poetically bright, really. But because I haven't got L-Y on, that's it. No, I haven't. The sun shone bright in the sky, and they got a total of no marks for that. Oh! Oh! But then Chaucer wouldn't have got any marks either. Oh, Shaky wouldn't have got any marks. <laughs> I'm sure these are, if Michael Gove has a list somewhere of approved people, I bet those guys are on it. Hang on a minute, he's definitely on the list. <laughs> what an idiot. Oh, William, you've let us down. Isaac, you've messed up on the cover of the book, kid. <laughs> That's even worse. Oh, no. Everybody's got it wrong. John Thompson, Etymons of English Words, 1826, shine bright, declare. Oh, dear. And the world turns. And actually, grammar becomes a, a little button on your computer. You speak to your computer, you don't even bother with a keyboard anymore. You speak into it, and at the end you say, standard British grammar, please. Bing! I'm glad I've retained those 59 technical terms. I think they'll come in handy. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I think this... I want sense, meaning, and interest, I think. That way lies an engaging education. Let's have some sense, let's have some significance, let's have some value. What do the kids get from it? What is the point of nominalisation? You can't trust the exams anyway, especially not that one. Quite please. There should be thermometer readings, and we're not doing it. We're making them end points. There's little journeys of learning to examine. It's no good. <coughs> I want to, I'd just like to, I'm about to finish. Have I still got some minutes, miss? Yeah, fine. fine, perfect. This is Tyne Cot, the biggest uh, cemetery on the, the Western Front. And I took some children there because we were studying birdsong. And then they were finding their own poems about the First World War. And I thought it would be good. We had four days touring around various places and we finished here. And when you come here, look at this village. Imagine living in this tiny little village here. Anyway, you come down that road and the coach parks behind this wall. And you don't see any of that. You walk right round the back. When it gets about here, the wall drops away and you see two football pitches full of these things. And here, you can't quite see it, there is a row of headstones that are facing the other way. All the headstones are facing you in that photograph. The other ones are facing the other way. 
And we started over there, and our guide, Robin, uh, was asked the question, why are these the wrong way around? And he said, because this is a battlefield, this is the, these people died where they fell. You've got some machine gun bunkers there, and the front line is here. And he said that these aren't proper burials, they're not proper headstones. They've got the names of the people on, and they're in there somewhere, but they're not here. And he said, right, I'll meet you at the cross of sacrifice all the way back there in 20 minutes. And we all went off, and one young lady, Phoebe, just stood there. And we all went, and I said to Robert, I have to go back again. He said, no, no, she did it, she did it. But she stayed there the whole time, so in the end I went to get her. And I said to her, all right. She said, just tell me again what Robin said. So I told her again, they're not really there. And she burst into tears and she cried for about 45 minutes. I, there was nothing I could do about it. When we got back and we were reading Birdsong and the poetry and we, she went in to do her exam. So far she got, this is when A-level had six units, she had A, 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 and when the result came back it said E. And I thought, shit, I'm in trouble here. Her dad's massive. <laughs> <laughs> Big blood. Um, and it, it, it was year 13, she thought she was way off the dome, it really, really mattered. And I thought, this has to be an error. There is no way this young lady's got an E. And subsequently, it, it was right. She, she got an A and they just sent me the wrong thing, so thank God for that. But I thought, I was worried about this, and then my colleague said, Oh, I've got Mr. Ely on the phone for you. Oh, you're joking. It's one of those phone calls like that. I said, Oh, Mr. Ely, I started making my apology. I know, I'm going to sorry, yeah, he said, Don't. I just want to tell you something right now. I want to tell you what Phoebe said. And he said to me, she feels like she's let the soldiers down. That's, I guess, taking kids to Belgium is a sort of grand scale of, of getting them, making it relevant, making it real to them. But finding ways to do that, I think is hugely important. Because do you think when my students went to the exam, they could do it. Down straight they could do it, because they wanted to do it. They actually were buzzing to tell people what they knew about something that had enriched their lives. They actually wanted to do that test. And we got really, really good scores. Thank you very much.